So I just want to say welcome everybody and uh, thanks for coming. And I want to specifically thank Daniel and Tobias for coming from out of town to be with us today. Um, over the past five years, Tobias Spicktig has shown and performed at venues such as the Swiss Institute in New York, Kunsthalle Zurich in Switzerland, the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, and currently has shows up at Deborah Shimoni Gallery in Munich and Jan Kops in Cologne. I want to start off by citing some recent work of Spicktig's, the first of these being an installation at Jörg Kargel Gallery in Vienna last November, where in a continuation of his Matratzen series, Spicktig filled the gallery to the brim with stained used mattresses donated to him by friends that in the end totally eclipsed the viewer from entering the space. In Malta this past January, Spicktig filled a gallery with used refrigerators, leaving just enough space between the fridges and the paintings which hung on the walls around them for the viewer to navigate the space. In a booth at Lista Basel, where I first saw his work, human-shaped figures made of used clothing donated from friends were drenched in resin and posed in various ways throughout the gallery. The sculptures became stand-ins for us, hanging out in a gallery space and wearing all the symbols of our newfound leisure economy. And as it is with the majority of Spicktig's work, you'll find yourself within one of these two rhythms. The space will either be filled with everyday objects like desks, fridges, mattresses, or the space will be sparsely populated with sculptures, posing as if in a photo shoot with paintings hanging around them. Through this focus on objects, Spicktig puts an emphasis on our newfound economic situation in which we identified our surroundings through objects which have a lifespan that is constantly being eroded by planned obsolescence and cultural dissimulation. Tables, fridges, mattresses, and used clothing, all of them used, although currently not in use. In this light, the objects transcend themselves and are no longer fridges or mattresses, but rather material. It's almost as if Spicktig is using the concept of material the same way comedians refer to their jokes as material. A series of paintings becomes a row of one-liners, albeit one-liners that diverge into abstraction and complexity. And ultimately, a fridge is still a fridge and a mattress a mattress, but in this context where the objects are turned into a material, they are able to play with the meaninglessness, loss, humor, and redefinition of space, which are all side effects of our late capitalist reality. Ultimately, it's a body of work that for me is still difficult to pin down. I'm still not sure how these paintings and sculptures relate to our world or fit within a contemporary asset-based art market. As Dan Shearer said in a recent paper about Spicktig, quote, the work thus stands in equal measure in a state of partial autonomy with respect to other works of its time and to conditions of aesthetic production and critical receptions it simultaneously occludes and mobilizes, end quote. Uh, and with all that, please help me in welcoming to be a big dig to the AA. <laughs> uh, and thank you for this generous introduction. Uh, it's a great honor to have been invited uh, to this talk. Um, I'll start right away. Um, this is uh, um, one of my recent paintings, most recent paintings titled Earth. This is... Um, Earth and uh, the moon in my studio. Um, I chose these slides as a prologue, sort of. Um, in this short lecture, I will focus on recent solo shows, four different shows, which all happen in galleries. Like, um, they're like sequels or chapters. Um, the first one is titled uh, Die Matratzen, um, in English, The Mattresses. Uh, first show, uh, first uh, in 2016 at Young Cops in Cologne. Then, like Deadlines in Heaven, a show at Gallery Bernhard in Zurich. And in the, uh, then we'll talk about Fridge and Mind um, this January uh, at Malta Contemporary in Valletta, Malta. And uh, the last show, which is still up, um, titled Long Stories. I'll start with the mattresses. That was the installation. Um, in Die Matratzen, I installed uh, used mattresses, as Pat referred, um, in the two main rooms of the small gallery, um, covered with dirty sheets collected from friends, while the office was occupied by a few ghost sculptures. Um, ghost in German, Geist, therefore the title. <coughs> but first, the mattresses. The literary and the literal aspect of the mattress as a basic layer that underlies all was uh, terribly attractive. 
the word thrown, the existence, parallel absence of all, when asleep, the acts of love, birth and death, and whatnot. First it existed as an idiotic, as, uh, first it existed as notes and idiotic titles, not to be mistaken as stupidity. The idiot is something else. I'm a big fan of the figure of the idiot. I had several sketches when the show came up. I thought it would be perfect there. Basically, I was into pulling a whole drama of melancholy into one room. An apartment full of my sorrows would have been another possible title. I stuck with Dima Trotzen, which has a bit of a messy connotation, as a slot can be called a Dorfmatratz in German. Someone that knows everybody, so a village uh, of mattresses thrown into one room. Then... <laughs> <laughs> then arranged according to fitting into the room as a pattern that made sense in terms of looking good. Not only in its form, looking at it from a distance, but in its complexity. Then again, arranging them, it was all about proportions, relating, defining an infinite field. The room, the building, the city and the village. The village in the city. And then the people who would see this, all part of the same village. And what these people would think and tell each other. The mattresses were inspired, of course, by a period of more or less constant travel, different cities, scenes and politics, gossip, as well, um, that the fact, uh, as well as the fact that my grandmother died in an armchair. The stories were there in the material and the material itself, so I guess it's really a bit of a Catholic understanding of material. The yes and the no. Why? I prefer not to. I'd rather not know why. It might be a platitude, but if there's a concept or an idea, it doesn't have a reason. <clears throat> this is in the office. Um, the ghost sculptures, I installed them. Yeah, they're kind of like uh, visitors you don't want to have in an opening, and they remained in the office. <clears throat> also, the gallerist at the time didn't have any assistance, so <laughs> I thought it was a good idea for him to have some somebody to scream at. The, mm. <laughs> yeah, the ghost. Um, where, where am I? Mm. Oh, yeah. So in the end, it wasn't so much about anything in particular, but more of a scenario of the concentration of signifiers and directions it could take, which made like the mattresses almost abstract. And so kind of similar, I think sort of similar about, about the ghosts. Um, <clears throat> hold on. Yeah, they're basic, the ghosts are basically a series of gestures and moves that appeared as elegant and appropriate in certain situations and uh, kept on being so in other ones. Um, a lot like good clothes and fashion, they might go out of style but never lose it. Um, that's in the studio, like um, when I first had them around. Bookshelf crashed when I came after I came home, and this kind of oh, yeah, um, it probably was them. It started with like uh, clothes laying around the department and they want the company, but not the guest that takes all the attention. <clears throat> uh, kind of used what was around, clothes from friends that forgot them. The material was a souvenir with uh, devotional quality, but I wanted to understand, so the first thing that came to mind was to use epoxy used for high-performance airplanes. It turned out the structure of the sculpture was exactly that, a monocoque structure. A uh, monocoque structure is when the, um, the skin takes the force, like you have in airliners and stuff. So, um, in terms of sculpture, it's neither addition as in clay, not subtraction as in marble, and it's also not a mannequin as a figurative sculpture, but sort of, uh, yeah, it kind of felt like the abstraction of fashion, the cut of clothes making the body itself. Somehow autonomous clothes, and it was good theater. Clothes fail to perform when worn. I think fashion is important and good in theater and as theater. <coughs> Yeah, the, um, the question of painting. Um, 
that's uh, a painting, a portrait of uh, my girlfriend, Teresa. Um, and I don't know if I would call myself a painter. Um, uh, no. It, yeah, the, the, the whole thing, like the show at Jan, kind of also, f um, I was, yeah, it kind of felt like a painting than really like an installation or something. And um, I really like the word uh, image or imagier um, in the medieval times when sort of the same word was used for sculpture or, um, or and painting. So I either call myself a painter and talk about concepts of painting or a conceptual thinker and then I think like a painter. There's no way, uh, there's no way around painting. I think it's the most luxurious medium. The only thing that's not really about something, but most, if it's good, it's something. <clears throat> um, and of course, it was uh, sort of impossible to show paintings with uh, mattresses because they uh, kind of ate each other. <clears throat> um, so in the next show, I uh, wanted to show painting, um, but I also felt like continuing this, um, uh, yeah, like the mattresses. And um, so kind of going from the bedroom to the uh, to the kitchen um yeah there's a table and it's a bit higher it's kind of the same field and uh and it sort of switched from from the horizontal to the uh, from the horizontal to the vertical um so basically i raised the level from uh, floor to table height which sort of established a vertical more visceral state of being um, let's go to the show quickly. Yeah, that was the show, uh, Deadlines, uh, like Deadlines in Heaven at um, um, Gallery Bernhard in Zurich. <clears throat> yeah, I felt kind of embarrassed about the simplicity of, of oh, now he's going to do a table thing. Um, but um, yeah, when it, it somehow worked. So, and with, um, I wrote this about it, and as with all things that are embarrassing at first, when you hit something inescapable, it's quite simple and probably some kind of laziness that one thinks something is a good idea, or in this case, a bad one. If it's easy, uh, if it's easy to realize, it can be even more embarrassing. And then you do it and you realize how much work it is to arrange tables in the way they should be. I think that's much like painting in a way, well, how I think of painting. The opening was like boarding an airplane, where you'd either sit beside the person you'd like to, but involuntarily rub your parts against somebody else's. <clears throat> um, yeah, these are some of the paintings that were in the show. They're basically final prints on the raw canvas and then uh, painted directly onto raw canvas with, um, yeah, oil paintings, basically. Oh, I guess one always paints a right from images, most simply from photos, and uh, it always ends up there. So one might as well just print something on canvas and treat it so it fits whatever intended need or great, uh, whatever, whatever one needs. This is not about expression, but more about how one thinks to impress. The only, um, to only have it on the screen is just like staring at a light bulb in order to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And yeah, there's kind of, yeah, like, uh, yeah, why not just use it? Um, so this was the show. Was like, um, this is another painting uh, titled um, "A Horse While uh, a Horse and Fat Ben Blazen, Reading Horse." Um, And this was uh, Fridge and Mind, uh, Fridge and Mind in Malta. I'm just going to read the um, sort of the invitation text I wrote. The 
fridge is an institution, even more so than buildings and people. The fireplace of most lives primarily spent inside with the Plan Libre, Plan der Freiheit, as a basis of negotiating one's state, of being real. It functions like real estate, holding a steady cold climate to host some rotten basic needs by using energy and producing heat in exchange. Opening, opening it to see what is missing is like uh, saying hi to the personnel at the counter of a museum or a gallery where the lights are not yet on. It stands for the body as our, uh, uh, as does, uh, it's, it stands for the body as architecture, it stands for people. Painting is the mind, the economy behind some desired congruence of being, the material pretending to mean something totally other than it is, preceding language like the third eye appearing as blank when one meditates too hard. So it's uh, the walk through the gallery, they were quite, uh, quite um, the fridges sort of took up the central space and uh, the, uh, it was like a half, yeah, half a meter between the paintings and the fridges where one could walk through. That's a glitter painting. It's basically wall, um, wall paint with um, diamond dust. And uh, kind of like, yeah, staring at the blank canvas and then it starts to sparkle. Um, this is a portrait titled um, The Third Eye. Another glitter. These are the flowers. Um, it's a, f a friend of my dad who usually goes um, hiking in the mountains and takes flower pictures. And I have all his. Um, uh, he always sends me the flowers. And then. <clears throat> Yeah, this is my this is most recent show uh, titled "Long Stories" at uh, Young Cops in Cologne again, um, and it was like, uh, yeah, sort of in the previous shows the paintings were obstructed for different reasons, um, like or whatever, and then um, in this one I had uh, old sofas installed, um, sort of central, facing the paintings. Ziggy Pop, and, uh, and to the right, there's um, the title is um, uh, "Liebe Hoffnung, seid doch nicht so verloren." Uh, Dear Hope, please don't be so lost. So of course, titled "Weinen," and these were sort of yeah, just um, old sofas from from eBay, um, from the city. Um, that's sort of the last image I'm going to show. Um, it's, uh, it's a sculpture um, first shown with the Swiss Institute in Belgrade and a group exhibition, uh, Fade In. Um, and the uh, title is Heiner Müller. It's uh, uh, so, yeah, a dragon sculpture out of scrap metal that um, spits fire and uh, pisses water. Yeah, just photographed again for record cover. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, should we start with? Should we? Huh? Yeah, I think no. <laughs> Thank you. I asked you this morning, what in God's name is this about? And you said, this is about painting writing, is what you said. Yeah. Now, could you talk about that? Because that's an interesting tension to me, to paint writing. It reminds me of Bet Benjamin said that every uh, work of art in the end, ultimately aspires the condition of shrift, of, of hieroglyphs, of writing. And I think there's something there. Do you, do you, do you think so? Do you agree with that idea? That yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe there's like a, um, <laughs> if you say what's, what, it not, what it's not about, I think it's not so much about like um, the gesture of the hand or like this whole, but, um, 
but actually how do you um, how do you sort of write um, and then uh, yeah like in a, in a big way uh, or in a, in a broader sense mm -hmm. um, you mean like writing as expression no not necessarily but but like how to how to get something right when you when you uh, you know, like talk like this like mm -hmm. how do you how do you say something or how do you pin it down with with like the right overtones or not and uh, mm -hmm. um, and I think that yeah I, I, it's easy, I think it's easier to kind of uh, for me to talk about it in musical terms huh. I think it's more kind of how like a, a writing or a writing style which I, I think is analog to uh, uh, if, you, if you mean it in a content way but um, yeah, to kind of find the right tone, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you mentioned, there were two things uh, that you mentioned uh, in your talk that reminded me of music in particular. The obvious one is the iconography of, which is then very stylized, like a poster as well, of Iggy Pop. And so you have this almost pop icon of Iggy Pop, and then he has this almost weird, uh, kind of rainbow hair or, or support. Yeah. And this kind of tension between the abstraction, the figuration, or what I would call the stylization, it reminded me of a Peter Max poster of David, uh, of, um, of Bob Dylan, which had this kind of uh, <laughs> hair. And so you're playing with these different levels of vernacular uh, posters, of photographs, and of, and of painting. Uh, so there's these different levels going on, and then you say it in a way it's like music. So I mean, you got everything going on in one spare or one rich image, and I think that's very uh, enigmatic because everything's packed together, and, it, and you need to unpack it. For instance, yeah. the glitter. When you start talking yeah. about the glitter, which you didn't do so much today, uh, and I said, "Oh my God, the glitter paintings remind me of the silver and the glitter paintings of Andy Warhol." And you said, "Yeah, absolutely," but that's not what it's about. And yet it's also about that. So I don't want to accuse you of being an art historical artist, but in a funny way, you come around the corner, you get to the back of something, and then you rediscover that kind of technique, and it's new again, and I think that's really, really interesting. So for instance, I can't say that you're an installation artist, because every time I try to do that, you say, no, I'm a painter. And then you said the imagier, because the imagier in medieval times, if you looked at the medieval documents for the uh, Bauhutte, for the cathedral uh, 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 workshops, the sculptors were called imagists, imagier, but the painters were also called imagier. So what you made was an image, whether it was flat, or whether it had relief or three dimensions, it was just an image. And that's what I think, in a funny way, you're doing. You're not a painter only, and you're not an installation artist, but you're dealing with all dimensions of the image. It, yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, yeah. But I, or is I this a crazy in, critic trying to throw you I don't know, I, I think in the end it's, it's simple, I mean, yeah. Um, it's kind of the material, it's like, yeah, the Sandy World thing. I mean, of course, if you want two sparkles, um, I got this restoration guy in Zurich that, um, that rest restores like Warhol's shoe series and stuff. And he sort of had the same glitter. Of course, that works the best. But, um, but yeah, that's the point, but also not, I don't know. Um, uh, maybe it's just a way of uh, how to talk about something and, um, uh, <coughs> No, I don't know. I don't know why, but um, maybe also not to fall into in, into those a, categories. Yeah. A, no, I mean I like categories, but but not n not in order to kind of know know what to do or what, mm -hmm. sort of what to do next. But I I also noticed that um, whether it's because of the conditions of uh, display and of. Uh, uh, the aesthetic conditions uh, of, uh, of a gallery curating. Um, you have a certain amount of space, but it reminded me of uh, the, the, the lower threshold is architectural, is spatial. Uh, when you see those damn mattresses or those uh, uh, tables yeah. or, or the fridges, 
there's a measurement of space going on, and there's an obstacle, a physical obstacle. So there's an abstract measurement of space. They fit in at a certain amount of space, and they only enable a certain amount of navigation for the spectator. Just so it's like very difficult. But that's the lower threshold, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Yeah. Whereas the upper threshold, which is the more geist, is the word, is the yeah. writing, is the thought. And that's one way I could navigate this terrain, I think. And what I found so strange and so interesting is that the word takes many different forms. And you got a little irritated and correctly irritated. And I thought of Raymond Pettidon not because of drawing versus the word, but because of the, the titles in your work. Yeah. The title is at war or in tension with the image, and yet it gives away somehow the truth content of the image. For instance, the knight that has lost his sword, yeah. the scheisse, <laughs> now I've suddenly lost my sword, sword, shit. And there's no sword, and he's standing there, which is like the Lacanian, you know, castration. Yeah. <laughs> but he's medieval. The imagier, you know, suddenly lost his sword. And then I thought of Raymond Pettibon, because he almost always has a philosophical, like a Kantian or a Nietzschean or Schopenhauer, some crazy. And then there's some skateboarder kid, or then there's some, you know, 1940s um, uh, criminal underworld figure, or there's a sex club or something. And then they have this philosophical title. And so this tension between the title and the image is what made in Raymond Pettibon made me think. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I mean, all these. Uh, which is you called the one-liner, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that tension, that friction between the word and the image, is part of the the game that all artists play with their titles, even yeah. when they say untitled. Yeah, I don't know. That's. Um, or do you think I'm over? No, I think he's also. This is really from generation. I, I love his work. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a fan, but but. Um, yeah, I guess it goes into that direction. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, um, hmm. What was the question? The question it was a series of uh, <laughs> associations where I was getting at the problem. I was trying to circle around like an open sesame, this yeah. enigma. And the enigma is the, is the paradox that I said at the beginning between the materiality and the geist. Yeah, but that's... The matter and, and geist. Yeah. Um, and, and I said the lower threshold is architectural, yeah. hence the AA, we're here at the AA, about <laughs> architecture. And the upper threshold could be any intellectual content. But you play between those two. That's the way I, I've seen yeah, your work right now. Just, or do you think that's a crazy way of looking at it? No, of course not. But it's like, yeah, it's a bit like, to me that's all kind of, uh, not a Raymond Petty one, but more or less like these, th that's that's what I mean by material. And uh, um, one of my favorite essays is by uh, Heiner Miller, or in his writing, he always refers to, um, uh, um, he always re refers to, to, to the Aufenthalt im Material. And I think it's so good because he just goes to his village and hangs out, and basically the whole thing becomes material, like the language, the, the people, and so on. And I, I think it's kind of, meaning something which comes to a stop? Yeah, no, more like a stay. Like, yeah, but uh -huh. it's really, uh, uh, what, what does Aventhalt? Well, Aventhalt means like when you, when you, uh, uh, when you, when you... Being in the material, basically. Like, you stay, it's like a, for a certain time period. Like, for example, my Aventhalt in London. Yeah, the so Aventhalt is staying. You had a yeah. wire. Yeah, you stay there. So, yeah, I guess that's sort of, yeah. Uh, maybe, I, yeah. So it's like a voyage through a certain no, really, material really that you stop being at. there and using it, I think. Huh. And I think that's also like image-wise, that's, uh, I mean, that's obvious. I mean, Paul had to go around and like take pictures and develop them and then, um, or find them in books and whatever. And, and uh, um, I mean, his, he then sort of imitated like the, the dots in a way. And I kind of, I, uh, yeah, the, the, in terms of painting, like this indexicality of material and where, this, where it comes from and the fakeness of that, I find, I find super, uh, I find really, really soothing. And, and, but also, it has like this whole historic quality that's, that's always within every work, like uh, 
takes like things from from the past or reworks, like, them. That reworks them or you already use them so it's kind of unconscious of civilization yeah yeah and also like the, in terms of photography i think it's like the, the history of photography to me is more or less just an industrial history of fixation because like the lens the lens was used i don't know by the romans yes it's like uh it's such a simple thing that sort of continued so um It's also something, I, uh, yeah, I, like, you're a photographer, a painter, no, you make images, like, um, yeah, whatever, whatever stare, you use it, and I'm just not so much into, uh, how do you say, like, fetishizing that, like, you know, like, wow, this is special, because I use, like, I use this tool, or I use this technology, I get it, but, if it, but um, yeah, in the end, it's, there and you use it. Sometimes I feel when I scratch the surface of what you're doing, it's not painting versus architecture or sculpture versus painting, but in the end you get to theater because you, you come back again to, for instance, when you talked about the, uh, the Geister, these, yeah. the body is the clothing. Yeah. And then you put them in the, you like this idea of the, if you go back to the beginning, can we get to the image showing the, uh, uh, the, the, like the reference to the nude descending the staircase, there's a spiral stair, like the Duchamp. You remember in the yeah, Gallery yeah. Bernhard? Yeah. Now the reason no, why but I'm let's pulling this out is the theatricality. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think theater is super, uh, uh, I find it really interesting at the moment in terms of uh, uh, performance and theater, sort of to distinguish that. Um, also, so you mean to distinguish between the two? Yeah. Because, because too many people nowadays say that oh, performance is, is... No, it's always, it's just also uh, maybe kind of uh, really uh, meta level in a, in a yeah. political way. I don't know, like um, friends at McKinsey, they, their performance get measure, gets measured. And I think like what's, uh, what's really political is good theater. So um, I don't know. I think there's some power there. It's like it's weird, but but you're also, sounding like Bertolt Brecht. Well, no, I don't Heine Müller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no. I don't mean that. I just mean uh, also in terms of painting. Um, I think the theater with the painting or in the painting, um, I find much more. Um, Uh, much more interesting than 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 like the, the performance of painting or uh, yeah. like this yeah, this, exactly. whole, this whole discussion. If it, maybe it's also like uh, yeah, like the modernism, uh, whatever. It's always this performance thing. Yes, but uh, but actually, I find the theatricality as opposed to the performance. Yeah, um, uh, somehow somehow hits me more. Now, what do you mean by the theatricality versus the performance? Because I think that's a very fertile pivot in your work. Actually, I think not. Uh, I think not the gesture of the painter, but actually the gesture uh, that sort of. Uh, um, gives it sense or, or meaning. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, you know, like even in classical paintings, like... Which is, which is why when I, when I showed you the, the paintings by, um, in Orvieto, uh, Signorelli, Signorelli uh, you, you got very excited because in fact, those angels that look like they were on skateboards, they're on clouds, they're on clouds and they look like the Geister. Yeah. And it's Michelangelo's favorite painter. But, yeah. And Michelangelo was, was a tough ass. Art. It was really tough. He hated everybody. He hated Leonardo. No, but there was even Leonardo. more interesting. He loved Signorelli. And I showed you the Signorelli. Yeah. And you're like, Dan, we gotta go fucking see the Signorelli. We gotta go see this thing. Yeah. Because it looked like these angels on skateboards. And they looked no, like but the guys. What's even more interesting about him, I think that uh, his figures look, um, they, they really like uh, look like Tom of Finland or like the yes. outlines. Well, also the, the way he, no, the dead he coming, also the dead when, when he did the, uh, the, res the resurrection of the flesh, the, uh, the skeletons which are pushing themselves out of the, it looks like the eruption of Hawaii right now, of Kilauea, these holes in the earth, and these skeletons are coming and the flesh is starting to come onto their, their their body and the, and it's unbelievable and then i was thinking of the geister because they are their own their flesh is their clothing because of the monocoque thing that you were talking about it's that they you remember you were talking about the epoxy yeah, i think yeah. that's more that's more what i like about fashion it's kind of this um uh this want to be something uh, and yes and no and i think also for uh, with signorelli 
Um, like the skeletons, like everything is fake about them. Yes, artifice. They look great, and I think that's that's maybe that's what I mean by theater. They're still skeletons, and they still appear like that. But they, um, yeah, they kind of uh, um, they they function on it on a, in a different way. Now, and if I, I, I like that. if I wanted to be categorical uh, and an old fart and mean and stupid and horrible, I would say you're a radical traditionalist because <laughs> every time I talk to you, in the end, it's painting, it's the Albertian Historia, it's the, the movement of the story through the painting, and it's the primacy of painting a, as a kind of figuration of human gesture. I mean, it's like reading Abi Warburg. I mean, it's like the pathos formula, since we're near the Warburg Institute. It's really a radical rereading of something that in the 17th and 18th century was the academic high point of mm -hmm. art theory, which was painting was the highest art form, yeah. and sculpture was beneath it, and there was yeah. a hierarchy of paintings, and you have all of them. You have landscape, you have the fig portrait, you ha the only thing you're missing is the battle scene, although you could have that too. <laughs> And then you have the abstraction, which is like the heroic modernist. So I really think you're coming around back at tradition. Yeah. Anyway, I could go on and on like this. I don't want to snow, snow you with this stuff. I'm just saying I found that very interesting, that in the end, you really are a painter. Thank you. 